recorded video to all of us. It is very helpful uh, tra training. We will try. Yeah. Uh, so next, uh, uh, provisions all, all. I hope you, all of you are doing it. So there are various returns you have to file under GST. There's GST R1, which you have to file on a monthly level. And there are quarterly return for small supplier. 3B returns monthly where you have to pay tax. And then TDS, GST, R7, this may not be applicable to you. This may be applicable to some of the units like government, Bank of Badoda or government organization in a gift city. So any government organization, they have to deduct TDS under GST also. So if you are providing any service to support the bank, uh, bank of Baroda in Gip City, then they will deduct GST TDS also on our payment. TCS is for e-commerce operator. And the GST R99 C is our annual return, which you have to file. It's now it's time to file the annual return of 21-22. So last date is 31st December. And GSTR 10 is final return. If you cancel your GST registration, you have to find GSTR 10 also. Next slide. So many times we get question, uh, Miss, if we sell any goods to DTA, whether we have to disclose the same in GSTR 1 or not. So if we sell any goods to DTA unit, it will go through bill of entry route. If it is to go on through bill of entry, it will be treated as import transaction for DTA buyer. And he will take input credit under the category of import. So we don't have to require it to report to under GST R1 or 3B. And we don't have to issue tax invoice also for it. We have to issue normal commercial invoice only because there is no tax requirement to pay an SEJ unit for DTA supply. So although practically we pay taxes, we file bill of entry, but all these transactions are done on behalf of DTA supplier because they do not have account with an SDL or SEJ online for reporting purpose. So that all these activities are done by SEJ unit on behalf of DTA importer. So you, but if your supply to DTA, DTA is without bill of entry, then we have to report in GST R1 and 3B and pay tax also. All service supply to DTA, you have to report normal transaction in GST R1 and 3B, and you have to charge IGST also on service supply. Next slide. GST refund. So there is a provision in GST that supplier can claim the refund, which we have discussed that there are two options, one supply and dilute or refund. And even exporter can also be able to claim the refund. Since SEZ unit are also doing export, they can also claim refund. But unfortunately, because GST people are not taking favorably claim the refund claim of SEZ units. They are denying it. And uh, people have to go to court. There are few provisions. One is uh, a few favorable court case. One is from Gujarat itself. First case was for Britannia. Next slide, Prakashi. So they were taken. So they were getting some common input credit from head office, and uh, this department uh, disallow ICD credit, uh, corporate HO credit, and department disallow the um, their refund claim. Then the High Court has uh, allowed the claim. And there is one case in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, this in uh, Tamil Nadu also from High Court. So you may, if you have big amount, you can try, you can go to court, you can file refund and fight for court case through court also if they reject it. If you have small amount, you can wait for some more time because government should come out with provision for refund for SEJ unit also. Although Law does not restrict, but it's an official mindset. They are not giving it. And whenever the government asks any representation, like now in budget also, government will ask representation, whatever your issue, you should give this representation. All of you, you can write to EPCS through developer that government should come out with clarification. We should get refund, whatever we pay on procurement. Because sometimes supply does not Supply on LUT. So you can uh, give your representation through developer, through EPCS to government. Next slide. 
sometimes you get goods uh, and which are defective so then you have to make return you have to return these goods so then question i whether you have to pay gst on at the time of return or not so there are two route of returning goods one first one route can be you file bill of entity for return of goods and then you you need you can go through bill of entity route also you don't have to pay tax because you saying simply say you are returning the goods even if officer insist that you have to pay then your then your uh, dtk supplier can take input but you should say it's uh, you are returning the goods should produce the original document and should not pay the tax second option is if you say you have to pay tax then you say i will not file the bill of entity i will prepare normal tax invoice and normal tax invoice uh, you can charge the igst or uh, and your pro you, to whom you are returning he can take input credit and you can use your input credit you got say normal gst r1 and 3b transaction when at the time of return of goods you can use your input credit balance on this invoice you can issue tax invoice yeah. if it is not bill of entry route you can use input credit and you can claim that amount from your supplier who is taking input credit at the time of return next so uh, i may have discussed this provisions uh, specific to gst scd units and if you have any question we can uh, this one now open to all sir sir can i ask one question yes please uh, so uh, again coming back to registration You said yeah. that the registration is mandatory for all the SSI units who are in the IFSC. It's separate for all SSI units. Separate. Suppose you want to have one SSI unit in IFSC, one maybe in other SSI also. You have to take separate registration for each. But unit. if I don't have any unit, I only have one unit in IFSC and no other yeah, so business. Then yeah, still you have to take registration. But under which section, sir? Because section 22 and 24 both says that yeah. even like if I'm dealing in a non-taxable activity. Then I am not supposed to take registration. Then under but in uh, if I am a broker, if I am a, a person who is but you are a broker, you are doing interstate supply. No, no, I I am not a broker. I am just uh, doing an uh, security transactions. Or why am I entering? But you will. Uh, yeah, go ahead. But uh, how will you do transaction? You have so, to avail service. You have to provide some services. Correct. So basically, yeah. I am I am uh, taking the funds. I'm an FSI yeah. agent, and I'm bringing the fund from outside India, and I'm yeah. investing in India. But you are providing service to customer outside India. Correct. So, Miss, uh, you are doing interstate supply. Hmm. Miss, you are recovering the consideration from them. Correct. From customer overseas, whether you are covered under export or not, you first you have to see section two definition of export. Whether your place of supply is in India, in case of intermediary, your place of supply in India, then it is a taxable supply. It, it is, is not exempted. It is it is an exempted supply because my all the customers are sitting outside India. But how where it where it is written, it is exempted. Under which hmm. provision? Okay, so it is a zero rated, which it is otherwise. Zero rated taxable. will be. Yes, no, under section sixteen. Now I still I don't say it is maybe the road maybe taxable also because if your place of supply is in India, to me you may have to pay 10 percent C plus S. So in okay. case of intermediary place of supply, the location of service provider first you have to see whether you are intermediary or not. Hmm. And you okay. may require to pay 10 percent tax also. Correct. And now suppose I am just a unit who is being established in IFSC. And yeah. And Sir, I am sorry. I am very sorry. You, somebody else can continue. I have some important. I will come back. Okay. Uh, sir. Yes. Sir, sir Navita from Viman again. Sir, can you just clarify again that D, uh, SZ to DT and DT to SZ transaction? How to raise invoice and currency wise, commercial or tax invoice? Uh, Miss uh, DT to SZ is a normal transaction. Only thing okay. you can. Uh, Actually, to take it on LUT without IGST, yeah, and as you get to details, it depend upon whether it's a goods or service. If it is mm -hmm. service, you have to show two invoice. One is foreign currency uh, for commercial invoice. Second is an INR tax invoice. 
If it is for goods, then you have to see whether goods are going with the below penalty route, without below penalty route. If without below okay. penalty route, you can invoice, raise normal tax invoice, uh, report in normally in a, uh, one and three B IGST transaction with payment of tax. And if it is mm -hmm. on below penalty route, then you have to pay tax through SEZ online portal through NSDL. Mm -hmm. And your mm -hmm. uh, buyer will take credit under import. You don't have to report in return. Okay. And SEZ to SEZ only uh, this uh, so, final currency. Normal. Yeah. It, yeah, normal uh, under LUT. If it is the same as, yeah. If it they again it depend upon goods or service. If it is uh, mm -hmm. for goods, one is if within same SEZ, no bill of entry, if the SEZ, it will go through bill of entry. Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you. We can yes, this contact number. We provide services to many SEZ units or customer. Even we have provided service to export promotion council. So we help. Um, is, we provide advisory service to SEZ units and developer on GST and SEZ provisions also. You can note down if you need our services. Uh, then we can uh, discuss in details for a specific provision to units. You can call, contact us. You can note down my number. Sir, one last question. Yeah. If I'm an unit in IFSC and dealing in uh, security business, still I'm required yeah. to take registration? Sir, I I'll answer the question uh, if you don't mind, sir. As per Section 25 of CGST, CGST Act, which deals with registration, it says that any SEZ unit, a person having a unit in special economic zone or being a special economic zone developer, shall have to apply a separate registration. Sir, Section 25 1 of CGST Act. Correct. So that is the only for the procedure for registration. Ah, yeah. So yes, section sir. 22, 23, and 24 nowhere says that this is required. 25 is applicable only when 22 and 24 is applicable. But where do you get exemption? If your supply is taxable. No, my supply is not taxable. I am just. Where, where? But we have, my income is. Had, again, we will discuss out. this. There is a slide which we discuss with all. Exempted supply and taxable rate is different. Supply I hope to you have noted my slide. Exempted ex, ex, supply from SEZ and supply to SEZ is not exempted supply. So you are not getting that exemption benefit of section 22 or 20. Sir, I am dealing, I am dealing into, I am trading into derivatives basically. Yeah, sir, but where it is exempted? So my entire... under which section? Where it is exempted? Sir, under which section it is uh, exempted? Sir, completely entire security transactions are or not even uh, purview of GST. Where it is written? Under which section? Sir, I, you, I will, I will give you entire. Sir, that is why we are not able to claim uh, ITC on the brokerages. No, nee, ITC is different. ITC is different. First, we are coming taxability. We don't, first, we come so to basically the only securities, money. Sec, so okay, I will tell you. Security is not forming part of neither goods or nor services. Only listed security, this security definition Correct. is there. Not Correct. all security. Correct. Not Correct. all security. What you are providing Correct. is various security and brokerage. And if you deal in security, then only it is exempt. Uh, so not good sources. But if you are providing services intermediary, you are not dealing with security. Not you are so now, now I'm talking about the second case in which I am just dealing into a listed securities. Means you are dealing on your behalf or means your client behalf? On then your it's different. own. 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 Yes. Then, uh, then uh, Miss C, you have to refer schedule three you to comply that condition. But if you are dealing on behalf of client, then it's uh, you are that intermediary. I agree. That that is a different thing. I totally agree. Because you, if you are buying on selling on six, then you are using your own funds. Then you, it's not your business here. Correct. So Miss I'm just business. Saying. Correct. So still, am I required to take registration uh, uh, in that uh, situation? Miss, you have to refer your LOA. So, LOA uh, means yeah. what purpose you came to, came to give prices? Are buying and selling? I hope they will not give an LOA. Just someone want to come only buy and sell security. Uh, so we are running uh, short on the time. Uh, yeah. Just Dignesh, to take your uh, contact number. Uh, you can uh, drop down your uh, uh, mobile number in the chat box. There are other questions also I, in the chat box. I have uh, yeah, posted please. my number and email ID in chat box. Uh, Fine, uh, definitely we'll come back. So we can have a second session also because uh, I am running. Uh, we have another meeting uh, after this, so we can have a second session of this. Uh, thank you so much all for joining uh, this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Yeah.
So we end the session over here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Please log off.